This last video for diffraction is just going to give us some more geometry to help us. So we see our intensity pattern here on the screen, all right, which is just this guy. And the main central maximum all right, uh, is different from the secondary maxima. Um, and we really, this is all we're going to be focusing on uh, today uh, so, uh, in, this, in this example here. Um, but what we care about, again, is this theta, which tells us the angle all right, from the center of the central max to the first uh, minimum, okay? the first dark fringe. So if we have, uh, we can set this up and we can look at it a different way. We, we have, you know, um, an, another uh, triangle here that we see. And if we look at the distance from the uh, aperture or the slit opening to the screen and the width, half, the, pardon, the width from the central uh, position of the maximum to the first dark fringe, okay, we get this little nice little right triangle. And we see that theta, all right, tan theta is going to be equal to little d divided by d, big d, okay? So... Uh, the really convenient thing about this is, though, is that since tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta, again, we can invoke the small angle approximation that we had before, and we see that theta, uh, tan theta is just equal to theta, all right? It also works out that way. So what we end up with here is another equation relating uh, these two. Again, where does it come from? Tan theta is equal to little d over big D, and the distance to the screen is big D, and we end up with this. So this is another way to determine the angular separation if we can measure the interference pattern and the distance between the screen and the aperture. All right? um, this all right, is the, what we call the angular half width. All right? um, but we can also look at the full angular width of that central maximum. So the half width, not to be confused with your teacher who's a half width, blah, 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 all right? Um, it's just going to follow this formula that we have right here, all right, big D, and we'll call this theta half, right, for right now, and this guy will be this, all right, that's the half, uh, linear half width, okay? So for the angular part of it, uh, we'll just call it theta one half, okay? And for the linear dimension of it here, it's D one half. If we look at the full width, okay, um, just the angular width in total, all right? Uh, what we know is that this full theta is going to be equal to two of the half widths, same thing with the linear dimension here, right? And when we plug this stuff in here into the formula, um, again, theta is just equal to, I uh, promise, a formula over here, actually we'll, we'll use this one. Um, this theta is equal to one half. This is one we had from our previous geometry. If we substitute in our values, right, this theta over 2 equal to d over 2 over d, these twos cancel out, right? And we're left with the same formula, theta is equal to d over d. So all that matters is that you're consistent, okay? If you're talking about the half widths, okay, just be consistent. If you're talking about the full widths, Use those in your calculations. So, if we do a quick example problem, you can see this, all right? And we're told that light passes through a single slit and shines on a flat screen that's located 0.4 meters away. That's big D. We're asked to find the width, uh, pardon, we're told the width of the slit is 4 times 10 to the 6 meters, so that's B. And we're told that the light that we're using is, uh, has a wavelength of uh, 690 nanometers, 690 times 10 to the 9 meters, all right? So, if we figure out the angular half width, Okay, that's what's going to be figured out right here. All right, what we end up solving for is this. We, we can end up solving for a little d. Okay, so we get that the angular, pardon the linear half width is 0 0.069 meters. But what is it that we're asked to determine? The entire full width of the central bright fringe. So that's just going to be two times that value. And when we do that, we end up with 0.14 meters. And this is the answer that we want. Okay. So again, um, just keep your trigonometry straight. That's pretty much all that there is here. The only physics that you're studying here, that you're learning, is the fact that light bends and interferes with itself. That's it, OK? It bends around a barrier, and it interferes with itself. In class, we will study this more. We will look at some examples. We'll look at simulations. Get your questions ready. This is 
not easy, but you can understand it if you make uh, the effort, all right? Um, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Enjoy this nice weather that I'm looking at here from my classroom, the modular. I'm going to go and enjoy it myself a little bit with my little puppy. All right, talk to you later.